the happy hours of play and the pleasures of the day, we will listen, stop, and look before we run. Safety always is our creed for a happy life to lead and a joyful time of better fun. March, march, march to law and order. Check the reckless on their way. For a guarding young and old, saving life and limb untold, we shall make a better record day by day. The meeting will come to order, boys and girls, and all together once again on the club pledge. I pledge myself to safety first, on the street, or wherever I may be at all times. That's fine, boys and girls. Now, as usual, you'll all take seats, please. Sit around very comfortably now and wait for a visit from Old Timer, the Old Man of the Mountain. A man and his dog can work and play, be together day after day, but still they will not squabble and fuss, for a dog is an understanding cuss. <laughs> Very golly. <laughs> Hello there, fellas. I tell you, this here Uncle Mel, he always seems to get a hold of some idea in that there poem of his that I want to talk about. Now, like today. Dogs. Well, you recollect me telling you about Timber, my biggest dog? Ah, uh, he's a daisy, he is. And by gosh, he sure understands me well. Now, today I was feeling kind of glum, right sour like an old lemon I was. So Timber, he looked at me for a spell, and then he commenced to whine, wrinkle up his eyebrows, just like he's saying, what you looking so uncommon mean about? Well, I kept on looking mean, so Timber, he brings me a stick and sits it on me lap, wanting that I should play with him. But I didn't feel like it. So he sat and done some more, oh, real loud, trouble-like whining. Then he come and licked me in the face and took right hold of my sleeve and he commenced to pull. Well, sir, he get me up sot so as I fell off in the edge of the old steps where I was sitting. And then he run around in circles yapping at me and pulling me coattails and grabbing at me shoelaces. Yes, sir, I just had to get up and play with that there dog. And for I knew what was what, I wasn't glum no more. And I was by golly even a singing and a whistling. And that there old hound dog, Timber, he was sure happy. Yes, I reckon he's a plenty smart dog. And while I'm a talking about dogs, I want for to tell you a hint. You know, a dog will always have more regard for a feller and like him better if the feller will let him see who's boss. You got to discipline a dog for him to know you got more will than he has, do you see? And then he'll be right proud to do just what you want him to. If he knows he can have his own way with you, though, he won't mind your orders worth a darn. Treat him just like he's got as much brains as you got. But let your old hound know who's the boss and who say so goes. But you want to once in a while let him run loose, you know, and do things contrary like a little, so as he can have a extra little fun. A dog has a great sense of humor, you know, and likes jokes and cutting up, same as a firewood. Yes, that's right. Well, now, I'm going to ask you, I'm going to ask you, before I tell you any more about that, I'm going to ask you a question now, speaking of dogs and animals and things like that. Yeah, see if this one will fool you. 
This is taken from one of Uncle Ray's stories that was in the Herald and Mail last month. Yeah, he wants me to ask you, is a leatherback a new kind of a purse? Or is it an ocean-going turtle? Or is it a Mexican reptile? Or is it an Australian mammal? It's the question now, and if you read Uncle Ray in the Halifax Herald and Mail last month, yeah, you'd have got to know that, and I guess good many of you do know. But for sake of you who mightn't know it, well, I plan to give you an answer to that just before I leave you. You know, uh, we're getting back to animals now, that there's some very funny things about animals. You know, animals is naturally friendly. If they think they got reason to protect themselves from you, or think you're going to hurt them, then they aren't going to be friendly. But you just take a dog or any animal that's got treated right all of his life, and a fella that's got treated right too, and them two can be friends. Or animals can get to be friends even with themselves. Now you take even a cat. Yes, and a dog. They'll get to like each other and play together if they get to know that they can both take care of themselves and have not no reason to be afraid of one another. And it's the same way with men. Two men meet somewheres, and if they both got that honest, fair play feeling about them, they can get to be friends right away. But if one of them's got a mean way to them, or a sly look that don't speak for honesty and fair play, then they'll get to be just as much enemies as anything. I tell you, by golly, no matter how you go to work and look at it, is that business of being true honest, boys and girls, being a good sport and kind of nice that kind of brings things together for fun and helping each other, no matter where you are or who you are. Ah, uh, yes. Say, did you fellas and girls know that a man can keep himself alive and well out in the outdoors without having, having, uh, uh, no bought food with him? Sure he can, same as an animal can. Of course, you got to know what things is and what things is good to eat. Now, you take a deer or a rabbit. Well, they live the whole winter on them little twigs and buds and stuff that they find. There's a powerful lot of things that's good to eat, and that's got what you call nourishment in them. Stuff that makes strength and blood in you. And there's things, too, that aren't good for a fellow. Now an animal, because he can't go to work and plant a garden and grow stuff, He's got to know what's good to eat and what isn't. You know how a dog will eat something and not some other things? That's because he knows some things aren't no good for him. I reckon for one thing, if a fella knowed all the berries they is growing wild, he could keep himself alive all summer without eating nothing that was bought in the store. There's blackberries, and blueberries, and huckleberries. There's cherries, and there's apples. There's most all kinds of berries to eat, and only just a few that's bad for a fellow. And I advise you all to find out about those. Yes, there's a kind of a queer-looking blueberry, a little different than the ordinary blueberry. But they think they call it a snakeberry. That's one you want to watch out. Yes, you better learn to know just what it looks like so you'll never touch it. But it seems to me like there must be lots of nourishment in plain ordinary grass. You see now a cow eats grass, don't he? And out of grass, why, the cow makes milk. 
So there must be the same nourishing stuff in plain grass as there is in milk. Seems like good sense, don't it? Well, maybe not so much, but it's got to be there, or a cow couldn't go to work and make milk out of it. And that's all there is to that. Well, now I asked you what a leatherback was. I suppose some of you might think it's a purse, or it might be this, might be that, might be the other thing. But just so it won't be any guesswork, a leatherback is the name of an ocean-going turtle of great size. And every day, boys and girls, in that Halifax Herald, there's a great story, great story by Uncle Ray, the newspaper uncle, and he tells you lots of things there that's mighty well worth knowing. Well, it's time I was off now, but I've enjoyed my visit right grand with you tonight. So away I go in a whirl of wind as usual. Well, girls and boys, I thought that old timer's visit was going to take up about all our time this evening. However, we have time to make the usual announcement, and I hope you've asked Mother and Dad to come in, because a lot of you small boys and girls are always writing in and say, Dear Uncle Mel, uh, are these kind of labels all right, or are those kind of labels all right, or just how do I get my identification bracelet? And, you know, before long, uh, I'll have to be saying goodbye to you for the summer. Expect to be back with you on the 1st of September. But I'd like, before we close down next month for the summer, for all you boys and girls to have the identification bracelet of our club. All you need to do is ask Mother if she will be good enough to ask her grocer for Moyer's biscuits and Moyer's cakes. When I say biscuits, I mean soda biscuits and pilot biscuits and sweet cookies, everything that the grocer will sell you as biscuits. I don't mean tea biscuits, you know, that Mother makes for a special treat very often for supper in the evening. Three cake wrappers and three biscuit wrappers with a postage stamp sent to Uncle Mel, care of this station, will bring every boy and every girl this wonderful prize absolutely free. You will have your own number registered in our big book, and I'll be very, very glad to hear from you. So remember, three Moyers cake wrappers, three biscuit wrappers, one postage stamp sent to Uncle Mel, M-E-L, care of this station, I have time now for just a minute with my imaginary glasses. Just time to see Joyce Nogler at Moosehead and Evelyn uh, Frizzell and Gladys Connolly at Truro. Oh, now look, someone has sent in for Phyllis Mitchell at St. John's Newfoundland. Yes, for an identification bracelet. Now, Phyllis Mitchell at St. John's Newfoundland, please send me your correct address because the parcel was returned with your identification bracelet in it. Oh, there's Judith Lockerbie at Tatamagouche and there's Billy Campbell at Picto and Douglas McIntosh at Thorburn, who likes Moyer's cakes and cookies and hopes Uncle Mel's boys and girls are all okay. Well, I hope they are too, Douglas, and I'm glad too that you are now one of our boys, because when you join the club, well, it's our club, not my club, remember that. And there's Alice Smith at Sydney, and Annie McKinnon at Sydney Mines, and Clarence Lewis at Port Edward. Oh, and how do you do David Colton at Dominion Six? You're looking fine tonight. And there's Audrey Parsons at Sydney, who likes Moyer's cakes and biscuits. And there's Zelma Rose at Sydney, too. And Velma Wadden at Dominion Number 6. But now it's time, once again, to say to you boys and girls, good night and safety first. <laughs>